early 1960s, President John F. Kennedy set a major goal for the space program, land a man on the moon and return him safely to Earth. To support this idea, Saturn V rockets and oversized facilities were built to accommodate the nearly 525-foot-tall rockets that were going to be used for the new Apollo program. The design phase didn't stop here, though. A rather unusual piece of hardware was yet to be completed, one that would serve a dual purpose. It would double as a base on which to stack the rocket and operate as a mobile launch pad. What made this idea seem so far-fetched was the fact that no one had ever built a mobile launch pad before. It soon became one of the most practical systems ever created. As the space program changed from Apollo to shuttle, so did the name. Apollo's mobile launcher became the shuttle's mobile launcher platform, or MLP. Even though the MLPs were made back in the 1960s, these old timers are still supporting the space program, with a few changes, of course. When you think about it, the MLP really is an unusual piece of hardware. There are only three of them in the entire world, and they're all located right here at Kennedy Space Center. An MLP can usually be found parked here near the vehicle assembly building, or down the road near the launch pads. Before stacking the shuttle flight hardware, an MLP is moved inside to one of the high bays located within the VAB. Once the MLP is settled in, the flight hardware is stacked on top, beginning with the solid rocket boosters, followed by the external tank, and finally the orbiter. A crawler transporter then moves beneath the MLP, lifts it off its six pedestals, and moves it and all the flight hardware out to one of the launch pads. Various technicians, engineers, and ground crews escort the MLP and its hardware on its five-hour trip to the launch pad. The MLP travels about one mile an hour along a crawler way, which is almost the width of an eight-lane freeway. Unloaded, the MLP weighs a little over eight million pounds. But with all the flight hardware on top, it weighs in at about 11 million pounds. The MLP is a two-story structure, which can be divided into three sections. The zero level, which is the top, and two levels below. A level and B level. The MLP also has four sides, numbered one through four. The zero level is where all the flight hardware components are attached to each other. This level is also referred to as the fifth floor, or G level, in the VAB, and the 95-foot level at the launch pads. Two blast-proof tail service masts, or TSMs, are located on either side of the shuttle's main engine exhaust port. They house the liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen T0 umbilicals. These umbilicals run through the orbiter and to the external tank. Eight hours before launch, the ET is filled with its fuel through these umbilicals. To protect the T0 umbilicals from the exhaust flames, an explosive link is fired at launch, pulling them away from the orbiter. A different explosive is then immediately fired, activating the 20,000-pound counterweight which pulls the T0 umbilicals back into the tail service mast. Finally, one more explosive is blown, slamming the hood shut to the TSMs. Inside each tail service mast is an oxygen deficiency monitor. O2 monitoring systems are present in compartments which have inert gas flowing, such as helium and gaseous nitrogen. If the oxygen level falls below an acceptable level, the red beacon will flash and sound an alarm warning you to leave the area. If the yellow beacon comes on, the oxygen level is still good, but there's a problem with the system. Double check with the safety office about staying in the area. About two days before launch, the remote digital readout for the O2 monitors will be removed. Contact safety to gain entry into the TSMs. Another one of our safety concerns with the TSMs is the open grading of the upper work platforms. If you work in this area, make sure you move around carefully. Also, please note the man loading limits. The tail service masts are pretty cramped. Not much room here for a lot of people. Another unique feature of the MLP Zero level is the three large openings for the solid rocket boosters and shuttle main engine exhausts. 
At liftoff, the exhaust from the SRVs and main engines passes through these ports and out the flame trench. The blast created at liftoff is so loud that noise figures equate it to more than a thousand times louder than a bomb explosion. To help quiet the noise at launch and to keep the MLP cool, six large sound suppression water nozzles, called rainbirds, dump about 270,000 gallons of water, flooding the MLP. Even after all the water drains off, the MLP can still be slippery, so move around carefully. Of course, when you're working with such large and unusual pieces of hardware, you can expect there to be hazards involved. For example, the pyrotechnics. Some pyros, like we mentioned earlier, are located on the T0 umbilical cable. There are also pyros located here on the solid rocket boosters. At liftoff, these pyros blow the frangible nuts from the eight SRB hold-down studs and release the shuttle from the MLP. Instead of blowing outward, these pyros explode internally, which sends the frangible nut down through a stud and into a sand bucket. Pyros are always considered active. And unless you have business working in this area, you need to stay away. Inside, immediately below zero level, is A level. You can gain entrance to A level through the access doors located on sides two or four, or through this door located on side three. This door leads to compartment 17A, and from here we can go into the lower levels of the MLP. Before we get started though, there is a special rule of thumb to keep in mind. Always be aware of the number of the compartment you're in, in case you have to evacuate the MLP or if you need to call for help. Just look up at the door you're about to enter. The compartment number is posted there. If you turn around after stepping through the doorway, you can see the number of the compartment you've just left. Also, make sure you take a big step over the doorway combings. They present quite a tripping hazard. As you move around, you'll realize that zero level isn't the only area with hazards. A level has them as well. Compartment 7A and 21A each have a main power supply and a backup power supply for the orbiter. The orbiter receives all its power from these two compartments. If for some reason the main power supply were to fail, the backup power supply would be activated. These compartments are considered hazardous mainly because they could become fire hazards and burning insulation on the power cables would release toxic vapors into the air. Of course, if there's a power supply for the orbiter, there has to be one for the MLP. Right inside compartment 16A is the facility's substation room. This equipment supplies electrical power to all areas of the MLP, which means this space is extremely vital. This area is considered hazardous because of its high voltage, about 13,800 volts. Compartment 7A, 9A, 17A contain electronics protected by Halon fire suppression systems. When the system is activated, a beacon will flash. Because Halon displaces oxygen, you must evacuate the compartment within 10 seconds. We're going to the bottom level of the MLP, so we'll use the stairs here in compartment 17A, which will lead us down to 8B. You can also use the stairs in 2A, which lead to compartment 2B. Again, just like zero level and A level, B level has hazards too. One important hazard is entry and exit doors. Since the MLP is used at both the VAB and the launch pads, doors for use at one location may not be safe to use at another. The main exception is this door, which leads out of compartment 1B. It's safe to use at the launch pads, but in the VAB, there'll be a safety chain strung across this door. Use compartment 2B instead. Whenever hypergolic loading or pre-launch operations are being conducted, the MLP is pressurized 
which makes the pressure greater inside the MLP than on the outside. Signs will be posted whenever these operations are going on, and a special airlock door located here in compartment 15B will be the only way you can enter or exit the MLP. Also, and this is very important, when the MLP is pressurized, this door will also be your only escape route from level A or B. You can also use this door during an evacuation in the VAB. There, it will take you to either E or F tower. Use the airlock valve to equalize the pressure between the inside and the outside of the compartment. Hold the airlock valve open, release the slide catch, release the personnel safety catch, slowly open the door, step inside, close the door behind you, and repeat the sequence on the other door. Time to time, you'll notice doors with these signs posted. Even though these are not airlock doors, their compartments may still be pressurized. You must use compartment 15B instead. Compartment 16B contains a hydraulic pumping unit. This is a high noise area, so hearing protection is a must. Wear it at all times. Also, spilled hydraulic fluid will make the floor slippery, so watch your step. Throughout the MLP, you'll find emergency lighting by each evacuation doorway and red beacon lights throughout the MLP. A flashing red beacon indicates that the oxygen level has fallen below 19.5%. These lights also warn you when you should evacuate the MLP. When hydraulic pumps are operating in compartments 2B, 16B, or 43B, you may not be able to hear the public address system, so watch for these beacons. When you come across a compartment with both the letters A and B on it, it means the compartment encompasses both levels. For example, compartment 45AB. It's a very narrow passageway filled with fluid lines and cables. Some of these lines are small diameter high pressure lines. If accidentally hit, they could crack and vent gases, nitrogen, or helium. This is not an area to use when moving around the MLP. Choose another route. Located behind compartment 45AB is another hazardous area, the cryo valve skid. The valves on the skid control the flow of liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen from the fuel farm to the external tank during fueling. This is as close together as you'll ever find these two propellants. The hazard involved would be the combination of a leak and a spark, which would cause an explosion. Another feature of this compartment is, of all things, an access ladder. Once the crawler is moved under the MLP, this ladder is lowered, allowing access to the MLP or crawler. It's in this position during rollout for a good reason. This will be your only means of evacuation during an orbiter rollout. Well, we've pretty much covered all the levels and the basic hazards involved with each one, but there is one other subject we still need to discuss. That's evacuation. Since the MLP may be located at the VAB, launch pads, or park sites, evacuation routes will be different. In the VAB, you must leave the MLP from either side 2 or 4 during an evacuation, with one exception. You must evacuate from the zero level from side 1. In the VAB, sides 1, 2, and 4 will lead you to one of the protective towers, D, E, or F tower. At the launch pads, use sides 2 and 4 to evacuate, no matter what level you're on. Evacuation routes are different at the east and west park sites. Doors which are not available for evacuation will be chained. Become familiar with egress routes before you do work in the MLP. Emergency procedures at all locations are basically the same. The chief test conductor will announce the prime marshalling area by number during evacuation. 
Marshalling Area 1 is located in the Complex I parking lot. 3 is by the RPSF gate. 4 will be located by the SCAPE base when that facility is completed. Marshalling Area 5 is in the west parking lot of the PCC. Telephones are available in the vicinity of each marshalling area. Because the MLP is a movable facility and can be located at either the VAB, launch pads, or park sites, there are some basic safety rules you need to remember. Be aware of the special hazards involved at each level of the MLP. At all times, be aware of what compartment you are in. Make sure you know the proper steps for opening the airlock door. Know the evacuation routes for the VAB, launch pads, and park sites. And finally, during an emergency evacuation, head for the marshalling area and stay there until safety gives you the okay to return to your work area.